Hello everyone and welcome to Adam Shar Weekly. In this video, I'll show you how you can create a Twitter tweet count gauge or circular progress. So let's go ahead and take a look at what you'll be building. You can keep your eyes right there because that is exactly what you'll be building. If I go ahead and start adding a tweet, you can see that my character count is making sure that the Twitter gauge or the circular progress, whatever you want to call it, is filling up. So I have limited amount of characters. And in our case, in my case, I selected 140 classic Twitter. And once I go over that, you can see that it shows negative. It turns the color to red and it also disables the tweet button. So I cannot really tweet anymore because the character count is more than 140. Once I go to a different colors or different uh, letter count, you can see it goes from purple to kind of like the orange indication warning that you're reaching the count. All right. So let's go ahead and see how we can build something like this. So I've created a Sufio application and I'm using Xcode 14, but you can use anything that you want. You can use Xcode 13 and it will it should work as expected. Okay. For this, I'm going to go ahead and add a brand new SifUI view. And I'm going to call my view tweet count gauge, but you can call it tweet count circular progress or whatever you want to call it. There we go. And by the way, this is all part of the new course that I'll be working on. Uh, I haven't even started. I'm still working on the app and it will be a Twitter clone. It's going to be a really fun app that we'll be building together uh, using Firestore Firebase databases. And uh, it's going to be a lot of fun and it will be available in the future. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. So we have a tweet count gauge, which is just the gauge that we need to build. So somebody is going to pass the tweet count. So that will be the person who is using the caller who will be passing in the tweet count, like it's two, it's 10, it's 120 and so on. So let's go ahead and accommodate our tweet count gauge previews also by passing in some sort of account. Let's pass it 100. All right. It's really not going to do anything. We don't really have anything to do. Okay. Now in the body, we'll start by creating a circle. And I'm going to put a Z stack. And the reason I'm using Z stack is that I want to overlay circles on top of each other. So I'm going to go ahead and start with a circle, which already you can see it draws a circle. We will create a stroke for line width of let's say four. Okay. So we got the outline and we will start with a circle that is gray in color. That's the foreground color. That's the outline color. And we will also go ahead and set the opacity to be, let's say 0.4, a little bit faded out. The circle should be a little bit smaller. So there we go. We can zoom in if you want. There we go. All right. Or if you want it like that, that's fine too. So that's our main circle. And now what we want to do is we want to create another circle, which is going to be showing you the progress on top of this. And on top means that this is the first element in the Z stack and the next element, which will be stacked on top, will be another circle. So that is what we're creating. We can use the trim command or the trim modifier to trim this particular circle from zero. This is in kind of like the percentage wise and to a particular percentage, so 0.25. All right, 0.25 means that it's, well, 25% of the circle is kind of like, that's the only one that we are trimming. But we still have a long way to go, all right? So let's give it a stroke. And obviously we have to give it a same exact uh, frame or else it's, there we go. So now you can actually see the 25%. That's the black part right there. You can see it's kind of like filling up. If you change it from and to to 0.5%, then it will be half filled. And as you can imagine, if you put one over here, it will be completely filled. All right, so that looks like it's working correctly. We're gonna leave it to 25. Now, one of the problems is the 25% is this part, right? We don't really want to start over here. We want to kind of like start from 
this part on the top because starting from the side at the bottom right it's kind of like weird so what we want to do is to start from the very top all right so let's go ahead and see how we can do that well there might be some other ways that you can do that but what i have done usually in these cases is to use a rotation 3d effect and rotation 3d effect and then rotating it to 270 degree or some other degrees that you want on z-axis so it's rotating this particular trim from here to 270 degrees from that point and now it kind of appears correctly so let's go ahead and save a 0.5 now and yeah it looks actually pretty good right okay so we look like we're on the right track now the next thing would be the foreground color meaning the color right now is filling out to be black which is default for a particular stroke but we want it to be different colors based on the number of counts so i'm going to go ahead and create a property over here and i will call it gauge color i mean you can i guess call it anything you want uh, i'm just calling it gauge color all right and right now i'm just going to go ahead and return purple okay now let's go ahead and set this particular gauge color as the foreground color so we'll do it over here and we can we should be able to see that what it looks like uh, make sure that the spelling is correct okay and hopefully when it loads hopefully we'll be able to see something let's go ahead and refresh it again there we go you can see a little bit of a purple color we can zoom in if you want to there we go okay so it looks like we're on the right track but the gauge color actually depends on a number of different things the gauge color depends on the tweet count so now we can perform kind of like a switch over here switch on the tweet count if the case is 0 till 119 letters then we will just return you the default color which is purple or you can use anything you want if the case is between 120 till 139 then we will return you a little bit of a warning color let's say orange and if the case is 140 which is already you have reached the highest point or the maximum i know that now the tweets are like i believe they're 280 but i'm just going with 140 all right then we can return red and then we have to also have the default case and in this case we can just return kind of like gray okay so that's pretty good let's go ahead and check it out right now we are sending it 100 so that's why it's using purple but what about if i go ahead and say 120 you can already see it's orange great what about if it's 140 now it's red okay and what about if it's zero okay so it's still you know purple Looks like it's working correctly. That's great. The other thing that we want to do is once we are in the area of this one, meaning once we have 120, basically only 20 more characters left, we want to create an overlay and we want to put an overlay saying that, well, uh, you know, you have only a few more characters to left. So I'm just gonna go ahead and create an overlay with a text and let's say that overlay is saying uh, overlay can say anything I guess right so I'm just gonna say let's say 18 as text and font size can be anything we're just gonna say caption and font weight I'm just gonna use medium and there we go it actually looks pretty good now this number 18 should not appear when we are starting out this should only appear when you have only limited number of characters left. So pretty much like maybe you have 20 characters left. So in those cases, it should appear. So let's go ahead and create another property for that. Remaining characters count text, which will return you string. Again, we can perform a switch on the tweet count. If the case is 120 or more, then we will return you that kind of a message so we will go ahead and return you something 
which will be a string. All right. And in this, we are going to say tweet count, but subtracted from the original tweet count, which is 140. That's the maximum tweet count. Now I'm using the number 140 over here. I think it might be much better if you use these things in some sort of a constant file. All right, so you don't put this 140 every single place. You have one place to change. So create like a constant file if you want and put it there. So that if somebody tells you, hey, it's now 280 and not 140, well, there's one file to change, okay. All right, now we can go back over here, remove the 18 and say remaining character count. Okay, great. And now let's go ahead and check it out. So I'm gonna go ahead and say 120. And as soon as I say 120, you can see it's saying 20 over there in the overlay. What about if I am 160? I just keep on writing. So you can see that it is also calculating those changes. But for 100 or anything less than 120, it doesn't do that. The next thing we need to do is to keep this percentage, is to change this percentage dynamically. Right now, it's always showing us 25% because we have passed in 0.25. But this 25% or 0.25 will be dependent on the number of tweets, the number of character of a particular tweet that you have. So we will create a variable over here percentage, which will return you a double. And what we will do is we will calculate the tweet count that somebody is sending you, the caller is sending you, and then we will simply try to divide it by 140. Again, it might be a good idea to put this 140 somewhere. Actually, you know what? I've been saying that for a long time. Let me actually do that so that you know what I'm talking about. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say constants. Always a good idea to, if you have these kind of things like hard-coded values, put that into some sort of a constant file. So I'm just gonna say constants. And I can even go ahead and create kind of like a substructure, inner structure with say static values. And now I can go ahead and add some value in there, 140. And now I can start using the maximum tweet count. If it changes, if somebody tells me it's 280, I only have one place to go and change it. Now we can start replacing these things. You can actually replace it over here also, I guess, but let's go ahead and replace in the things or the places where we easily can, like this one. And how about this one also? And making sure that this is also double. So you're dividing a double by double. Now we have the percentage. We can pass the percentage right here. So it will be based on the number of characters that you're typing, all right? And now we can see 100, uh, if you're passing in 100 as the tweet count, the actual single tweet text count, the circle is filled this much. If I say 120, you can see circle is filled more. If I say zero, circle is filled only a little bit. Well, nothing, I guess. Now, if I say 10, circle is filled a little bit. If I say 140, circle is filled completely. What about 160? Still, it's completely filled. All right, so it looks like it's working. The only last part that we need to do is to start using it. All right, so let's just say 120 over here and start using this. Let's see how we can use it. In order to use it, I'm just gonna go back to the content view. And in the content view, I can start trying to use this. So let's go ahead and add a tweet gauge, pass in tweet count, let's say 120, all right. And it would be a good idea to use some sort of a text editor. So let's go ahead and use text editor where the text is going tweet Tweet, I guess, that's fine, I guess. Tweet text if you want, that's fine too. And we will create a state variable, tweet text, which will be string. Now this text editor, it's kind of hard to see where it's actually being displayed, right? Uh, yeah, because you can't really set a, you can't easily set a placeholder. Even if you do set a placeholder, it kind of doesn't work as expected, all right? Okay. 
Next up, we will pass this tweet text dot count to this one. So tweet text dot count. Okay, and now let's go ahead and use it. And there we go. Now you can see that I am adding some tweet over here. And the count is going, 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 and all that stuff. There we go. All right, pretty cool. Now, one other thing that you can do if you want is also add a button and make sure that the button, which is saying like tweet, is only available or it is only, uh, you know, it is only working when you your tweet count is correct. So button style, I'm just gonna say border prominent. There we go. Currently the button is available and I think this uh, text editor is taking up the whole space, but you can set a frame to it if you want to, to accommodate that. So right now you can see that it is taking up the whole thing and we want to see that the tweet button, either it has to be disabled or not. And you can disable the tweet button by simply saying disabled calling disabled and passing in true. Now the tweet button is disabled. But by default, when the program or application starts, it should be enabled. And if you go over the count, only then you would be disabling it. So is tweet button disabled? We will create a property. Now tweet button is disabled, I guess in a couple of cases. If the tweet text is empty, okay, then is it disabled? or if the tweet text dot count is greater than or equal to the static values, which is maximum tweet. So in either or cases, it will be disabled. And now we can pass this over here. Is tweet text disabled? Tweet button disabled? So right now it is disabled because there's nothing in the text, but now it is enabled. Now it is disabled. And let me see if I start typing something out, and once we reach more than or equal to 100 and uh, more than 140 characters, well, actually, it should be greater than, right? Not equal to, okay. Because 140 is okay. So we want to make sure that 140 is allowed. We're not stopping you at 104, we're stopping you at 141. So let's see. Okay, that's good, but now it's disabled. That's good, disabled. So now you can see it's working correctly. Pretty cool, right? So there you go, there you have it. We have made a tweet text counter gauge or circular progress for the number of characters that you can type in a tweet. And this will be part of my upcoming course where you build a Twitter clone. Now the course is still a bit of a long way to go but it will be a really exciting course with Swift UI, with iOS 16, and with Firebase Firestore databases. So it will be a lot of fun. And there you have it. Thank you so much. Go ahead and like the video and share the video. If you like this video and want to support my channel, then the best way would be to check out my courses on Udemy. You can see that I have a lot of courses on iOS development, including my highest rated course, on building augmented reality applications using RealityKit and ARKit. I also have courses for Swift UI, MVVM design pattern with the UI kit framework, combine Swift UI recipes, RxF, even core data for best selling courses. So if you like to learn more about these courses and purchase these courses, definitely check out the links in the YouTube description. Thank you so much.